of individuals under the age of 18 live in poverty. 20%, one out of every five children live in poverty. But that's not a financial problem. Since President Lyndon Johnson declared a war on poverty back in the 60s, we have poured billions, if not trillions of dollars in the anti-poverty measure. And what do we have today? More people today are living on food stamps than ever before. The problem is in the home. The problem is because daddy is not acting like daddy and mama is not acting like mama. That's the problem. The problem is that families are not living the way God intended them to live. And any time we leave the pattern that God has left us, we're going to run into problems. We need to understand that and we need to get back to the pattern of being parents the way God intended it to be. So Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. First of all, this verse does not teach what sometimes we think it teaches or what some people say it means. In other words, Solomon is not saying, you teach your children about Jesus Christ, and they'll always believe in Jesus Christ, and they'll always be faithful. That's not what Solomon is saying. Rarely can you take one proverb from the book of Proverbs and say, this is true all the time and in every circumstance. Because that would take away man's free will. Parents can do everything that they can do. They can do all of the right things until their child is 18 or 22 years old. And when that child leaves home, the child falls under negative influences out there, either through a spouse or through friends. And then they leave and they forsake everything they've been taught. That is not necessarily a reflection on mom and dad's behavior because the devil is at work. And so Proverbs 22, 6 is not saying that. But what is it saying? Let's take a look. Let's look at the major words that Solomon uses in this verse. First of all, he says, train up. The word train up literally means to dedicate. It means to inaugurate. It was used really of ceremonies. And in fact, the Jewish ceremony at the end of December called Hanukkah comes from this word. That celebration began at the dedication of the temple after Antiochus Epiphanes, the Greek ruler, desecrated the temple during the intertestamental period. That's where that Jewish holiday uh, stems from. So the word train up means to dedicate, it means to inaugurate. So here in this context, it means to start on the spiritual training. It means to give your child over to God in training. To dedicate or to inaugurate, to begin the training process. The word was originally used by the Jews to uh, put something sweet on the palate of the baby's mouth to give them to start something. To train or to inaugurate, to begin the process. It was also used of breaking, breaking wild stallions. <coughs> Turn back over to Deuteronomy chapter 6, just a moment. Look at what Deuteronomy, Moses says in Deuteronomy chapter 6. We'll begin reading in verse 4. Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning of verse 4. Hear, O Israel, this is the basic faith, the basic confession of the Jewish faith. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. These things which I have commanded you today shall be on your heart. Notice that they've got to be on the parents' hearts first. You can't teach what you don't know. You can't leave where you're not going. And so if parents want their children to be trained up right, then mom and dad's got to be going on the right path first. Verse 7, you shall teach them diligently, diligently to your sons. You shall talk with them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Write these verses on your forehead. I can have all of Psalms 119 on mine. In other words, talk about God all the time. If your children are having a spat, remind them that Jesus says that we need to treat the other one the way we want them to treat us. 
Oh, there are so many opportunities in a child's life to remind them and to teach them what the Bible says. And so train up a child in the way he should go, Solomon says. Start the map on the path that leads to heaven. The second word, major word, Solomon uses here, is child. Now this word used for child is used 200 times in the Old Testament, so there's lots of evidence to draw the definition from, but guess what? The word child here is used to refer to children from the, from the infant stage through the weaning stage. Samuel was uh, at the age where he was weaned. That's the same word. Up through the age where they're getting ready to be married. And so this word covers the child from the time they're born until the time they leave home, literally. And so the training occurs all the time. <clears throat> Whenever the child is at home, they're under mom and dad's influence and they need to be taught. And just take a look at the things that children need to be taught in the book of Proverbs. We're not going to read these verses, but just to give you a sample of some of the things the wise man says to children. Avoid games. Avoid those groups of people that are not serving God. Because God knows that we are influenced by our surroundings. And so avoid gaining, Solomon says. Avoid the adulterous, Solomon says. Don't be lazy, Solomon says. Speak appropriately, Solomon says. And boy, if you can get the young people in the United States to do just those four things, our young people would be better off. They'd be better off when we could get mom and dad to start doing those four things. Because a lot of the responsibility of the problems are on the shoulders of mom and dad. And then Solomon says, train up a child in the way he should go, his direction, the way he should go. Literally, the Hebrew says, according to the mouth. But it means in his direction or his life, his mode of life. Now, some people think that Solomon is saying, understand your child. Understand your child's temperament. Understand your child's personality. Understand your child's likes and dislikes. And raise him within the framework of those personal characteristics. And there's some truth to that. But I don't think that's what Solomon is saying. The whole book of Proverbs is about moral and spiritual instruction. And so what Solomon is saying here is that we need to train our child in the way that he needs to go morally and spiritually, understanding where he is. So we don't teach a six-year-old what we teach a 16-year-old. We don't treat a six-year-old the way we treat a 16-year-old. And we don't discipline a six-year-old the way we discipline a 16-year-old. Train up a child, but start him out young. And stick with it. Training children is an 18 year. You older parents with children who are older may say it lasts longer than that. But at least an 18 year process <coughs> to get them where they need it to be. But we've got to understand who our children are in order to train them appropriately. The plastic years pass so quickly, the days of youth. And the children change so fast, and soon they harden in the mold, and the plastic years are past. Then shape their lives while they are young, this be our prayer, our aim, that every child we meet shall bear the imprint of his name. If you keep up with college football, you may have heard that the coach for the Florida Gators has retired, Coach Urban Meyer. Being a, an SEC fan and a fan of everything non Florida, I'm glad to see him go. But in the press release, something struck me that Coach Meyer said. He said, I've been coaching for, I don't know how many years, 20 years or so. He says, I want to spend more time with my girls. And at least one of them, I think, was 16. I don't know how old the other ones were. And I don't want to make a statement criticizing Coach Meyer as a father or as a parent. But I don't know anything about his home, his household. I don't know what kind of relationship he has with his girls. But the thing that struck me is you want to spend more time with your daughter at 16, but what were you doing when she was 6? What were you doing when she was 2 and 3? Were you so dedicated to college football and you wanted to see your team win national championships so greatly that you didn't want to be there to see her take her first steps? You didn't want to be there to help her with her spelling words? 
You weren't there when she hit the head with her math? Is it time when our children are 16? Oh, no, I need to spend more time with them. Well, what about when they're little? You can't train a child in the way he should go if you start it when they're 15. You've got to start it when they're five days. When you bring them home from the hospital. And you teach them by word and by example that John is the most important thing in their lives. I want us all to make a pact with our children. And your grandchildren. This is an acronym for presence, attention, closeness, and teaching. First of all, parents, be present in your children's life. You recognize this song from the 1970s, 1974. It was a number one hit. It was Harry Chapman's only number one hit. In my research, I found that his wife is actually the one who wrote the song uh, based on the relationship of her first husband and his relationship with his dad, who was in fact a politician. So this song was written by a woman who saw it work out in her husband's life and his relationship with his dad. My child arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. There were planes to catch and build to pay to learn the law while I was away. He was talking before I knew it, and as he grew, he said, I'm going to be like you, Dad, and I'm going to be like you. Children want to be with mom and dad. Now, y'all have seen how the girls, uh, and I don't, I don't use myself as the, as the supreme example of fatherhood or parenthood. I've learned from other people. I've learned from Kevin Williams and Tom Langley and Darren Schroeder. You don't know, but I've learned how to be a better father by watching their example. And when I was in high school, you know, I, I wanted girls to hang on me. You know, you, you want that when you're a teenage boy. Well, now I've got girls hanging on me. <laughs> and it's great. It's better than it had been in high school. Children want their parents present in their lives. And so moments and dads they be present in their lives. Jacob goes on to say, my son turned 10 just the other day. He said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's play. Can you teach me to throw? I said, not today. I've got a lot to do. Children are so understanding. That's okay. And he walked away with a smile never dimmed and said, I'm going to be like him. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be like my dad. But then he goes on to say, I've long since retired. My son has moved away. I called him up just the other day and I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. He said, I'd love to, Dad, if I can find the time. You see, my new job's a hassle. The kids got the flu. It's sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's been sure nice talking to you. He hung up the phone and encouraged him that his son had grown up to be just like him. And because my dad was a preacher, I've gone to the nursing home a lot over the years. And I've seen a lot of people in the nursing home whose families don't visit. And I wonder how many families in the nursing home, their kids don't visit them when they're 80 years old because mom and daddy didn't spend time with their kids when they were 80 years old. So we need to treat our kids good when they're little because they're going to be treating us some way when we're old. Or do we want them to be just like us? Children have a way of teaching us priorities. Second of all, give your children attention. The gentleman wants his dad's attention. We were driving along the car one time with my younger brother. was standing on the hump. This was before the days of seat belts. You know, he was standing on the hump leaning on the front of the seat, and he, he kept trying to get my dad's attention. Dad, Dad, Dad. And Dad just kept talking, and he's a preacher, he never sh shuts up. And so he couldn't get Dad's attention. And so finally my younger brother said, Lane Holland, give your kids attention. Not just short bursts of attention, but long spans of attention. Give your children attention. And I'm preaching to myself here too. Mute or turn off the TV when you're listening to your kids. Give them your attention. Because the human brain cannot receive information from